Hi friends, myself Nathan Pandit and here we are going to start a new video tutorial series on WPF where we will learn every single part of WPF if you don't have any kind of idea about WPF so don't worry about that because I'm going to tell you everything and I'll tell you my experience of WPF but before starting WPF we must be aware with classical windows forms so that we can have an idea how WPF application are working and what we were doing in the classical desktop application offered by Microsoft as Windows Form. So before starting, we have to understand something about WPF. That is a general question every time whenever we are going to start a new technology so that ever comes in mind like why and how. So the first thing that we have to understand why WPF. So Windows Presentation Foundation, a part of Windows FX, it's a completely new presentation framework replacing a user GDI, GTI Plus and Windows 32. Competes with HTML and Micromedia Flash as their behavior, we can make my uh, desktop application more effective, more animative, more colorful and much more. Give developers the tool to make a qualitative application. What the qualitative applications you'll see in the next part of WPF video tutorial series because then we have to code and we have to work on the real time so in this video we also going to discuss some kind of architecture how WPF application are working so let's see if we're talking about WPF architecture before WPF the other user interface frameworks offered by Microsoft such as MFC and Windows Forms was uh, just wrapper around Windows 32 and GDI 32 in GLLs that was provided by Microsoft as system.windows.form the same in assemblies. But WPF make only minimal use of Windows 32. So WPF is more than just a wrapper, it's just a part of a Microsoft.NET framework. It, it contains a mixture code where uh, we have some kind of code from manageable code which is also known as CLR code and also unmanaged code that is provided by a presentation framework in WPF. The major components of WPF architecture like uh, I'll show you in the figure. The most important part of WPF uh, that is whenever we're going to start any kind of single code from WPF. Before that we have to understand these three most important part in WPF. So I just want to take a pause on that. Before that, I need to explain you something about like uh, how my uh, how was we are working on the classical environment of Windows Forms. Let's see. We was using the entire program, entire code that was provided by Microsoft in Windows Form that was easily understood by my common language runtime, which is also called as CLR, because that was a complete manageable code. We get the code from CLR we use libraries of user 32 so that we can use the environment of buttons forms from my desktop and then we use directx directx actually uh, whenever we use directx it has a responsibility for display the output after rendering so whatever we are designing in my manageable code finally directx has the responsibility to be rendered as display and has to be shown to the user desktop Finally, it gives the instructions to kernel and kernel take the instructions and operate it as you want. But in WPF, we have three most important part and the first is presentation framework and the presentation core have been written in managed code. But whenever you have to use unmanageable code, so, in, uh, so make a communication between CLR to make my unmanageable code in .NET architecture we use a new component which is MyCore. Actually MyCore is just a part of unmanaged code which allow uh, tightly integration between DirectX and Scylla. Scylla makes the uh, development process and more productive like such as uh, memory management, error handling that was you are using in the earlier examples of your Windows forms. So which is the most important part of WPF. So we have these three new component by which we can create my WP application more effective, more representative and uh, you can use any kind of templates to design your custom controls. Not only the custom control, we can also design their outlook. 
Okay, so if we're talking about advantage of WPF, in the earlier GUI framework, there was no real separation between my code and my design. Let's see, just say, uh, like uh, how an application look like and how it's behaving. Both, that means GUI and the behavior was created in the same language. If you are a C-Sharp developer, so you will write the behavior and you will design your application into C-Sharp. Or if you are a VB router developer, then you have to be write your design into VB and you have to write your behaviors of your application, how it will going to be work in the same programming language that is VB, which would require more effort from a developer because developers are not so good in designing. So we have to design my single application or every part of my application into the same language in which we are going to write my business logic or you can say the behavior of application which is more like uh, more complex uh, give the complexity to the to the developer if we have to create my both ui and behavior with the same languages but if we're talking about wpf in wpf ui elements are designed in xml or you may be in design in c sharp or visual basic if you want but we have a tree structure here to write my controls or to write my like my um, to making my design in format of tree structure well behavior can be implemented into the processor language such as visual basic or the c sharp that you are uh, still using so it's very easy to be separate my behavior from my design code well ex uh, with the the most mo most important benefit of xaml the programmer can easily and the parallelly can work with the designer whenever your designer are working on the designs they are creating your, their controls so you can directly using them and uh, the separation between GUI and its behavior can also use easily because the both part you have you, you have permissions to write into different different thing the designer can easily understood your XAML because they are also using HTML and the XAML XML syntax so they the people have a uh, benefit to use xaml and they can design easily your application into xaml templates you can design you can create styles and templates to make your controls with a custom ui that means suppose if you don't want to use the classical view of your button you don't want your button should be in the rectangle format you want button should be in ellipse or whatever like in a pyramid format so you can make them as you want this is the actual advantage of wpf you can give a custom definition to any kind of ui of any control we'll see in further examples whenever we have to write the code about them and how to make your their custom templates so if we're talking about the future features of wpf wpf is a powerful framework to create windows application it support many great features some <clears throat> some of which have been listed below like uh, first and the most important behavior which is control inside a control before WPF we are not able to use we are not able to create any any control inside a control like if we want to create a button into text box we can't do that but uh, if I if I'll tell you uh, if you want to create a button inside a button that is that is also not possible in Windows forms because button have a property which is text and inside a text you can only assign a string value you can't give a reference of another object so that you have to use only user 32 environment to create your controls there was no any uh, behavior to write your custom controls like if we're talking about data binding data binding mechanism to display and interact the data between ui elements and the objects on user interface that is suppose if you're talking about windows application and you have to bind your data or that is comes from any collection and any kind of data, data set object then you have to use only the data set data source property which could be in only c sharp or visual basic but here you can bind your two elements on directly user interface there is no need to bind their behavior into the procedural language like c sharp and visual basic you can bind them on ui directly if some controls are going to be changed then definitely my destination element is also going to be changed because we have multiple type of binding here like one way two way and many more so if we're talking about media services media services basically provide an integrated system for building user interface with a common media elements like images audio and also video template in wpf you can define the look of an element directly with a template animations 
which is allow you to make your movement into the controls on directly your UI alternative input suppose multi touch input like uh, Windows 7 and above like Windows 10 direct 3d allows you to display more complex graphics and the custom themes so these are the major behavior and you can say the features of WPF where we can make my more uh, beautiful application that is attractive application for the user end and also for your clients so thank you so much guys we will see in the next video how to start working on WPF application like a hello world program and many more so thank you so much guys stay tuned with me again myself Nathan Pandit and you can find out me on anywhere Twitter LinkedIn anywhere where you want if you have any kind of query you can mark me a mail so thank you so much guys have a good day